So I'm going to actually take some of this apart and have a look, see what's inside, see how it works. So just give us a good look at how it's put together as well. Okay, maybe that wasn't the right uh, thing to take off first, but never mind. And these screws are different. Yeah, so I've got some kind of circuitry on here. Um, not quite sure what. I'll have to try and look up these chip numbers and see what they are. There's no big sort of capacitors as such. This may just be to do with monitoring the uh, power state and the hard disk drive activity. Um, I'm not sure whether these control any kind of uh, power up, whether they control the power up of the drive in a way so that it doesn't cause drop out elsewhere. I don't know. I'll have to have a look up the part numbers on that. I we can uh, zoom in enough to see. Yeah, so looking at this PCB, there's some quite thick tracks on some of these. So it could be that these are switching the power to the hard drive rather than the, the uh, mechanical switch on the front of the unit actually just cutting and making the connection directly on the power line. It could be that that's just being used to trigger these to switch the power instead. So these might be some kind of switching ICs. So we'll have a look what they are and then investigate further. Yeah, you can see here this on this board. You can't see anything actually because the focus is all over the place. There's some quite thick traces here and these are going over to some stitched veers here in the circuit board that you also can't see. And then that passes through to the other side of these chips. It might as well have a bit further look at this. So yeah, there's a pin here that goes into that. Let's come out. You can see that that just pivots on that point there. It's quite a bit of plastic there, so it's, it's pretty well made. All of this is metal. All these joints are. It's, it's not bad for, for something that's only £14, it's, it's not too bad at all. Okay, so that's the door is part of this mechanism. And you can see how that that lever works there. So all that distance of movement provides quite a substantial amount of force at the back here to, to free the drive from the, um, the SATA connectors when you eject it. Um, yeah, it's a bit sharp in some places but not, not too bad. And it's got these um, little spring clips I've noticed as well. I think what these are for is to keep the drive pressed down so that it aligns properly because obviously the SATA connectors are at the bottom here so as that slides in at the back end here you've got that bit of spring tension just just forcing the drive down so that these connectors uh, the SATA connector data and power then fall in alignment with that as it's pushed in so I decided to pull this side panel off anyway, there's nothing interesting in there, it's just a, a standard little uh, switch like you get on a PC case. Um, this is a, a locking switch, it's not a momentary. And then just a dual colour LED down there with the three, three leads to it. So I'm just going to put this back together now. So 
So there's a little pin that's got to go in here. This little hole down here. That's this thing. So I need to make sure that that's aligned properly. Uh, looking at this, it's best that it goes on from the underside so that it can't fall out once the PCB is in place. It's interesting to note that they've even put brass inserts in the plastic on this so that's um, that's quite a nice touch because there's a degree of quality and care about this thing especially for the price I see that pins fell out now I think the PCB being over there is what stops this falling out, so just uh, try and get that back in place. It's back in there. Um, I will have a look at the chip on this. Um, that would help if I put it in the right way around. Oh, I shouldn't have done that one up yet because the, um, the screws are not accessible now. <clears throat> That's what happens when you put something back together in a different order to what you took it apart. So this is the PC I'm going to try and uh, mount this rack in. That's just the temporary machine that I've been using for two or three years. <laughs> As you can see it's all nicely cable managed, everything's been secured and a nice uh, professional job. I've uh, blasted it out with the air compressor as well. Um, I'm still waiting for someone to manufacture a PC case with a hoover bag built in. So I, think, I think that would be a winner. Just shove this uh, somewhere at the front here, and uh, that will hopefully do for this machine. No, first dent on the wall. Can uh, slap a drive in. And that's it. So it's quite a nice, neat solution. Quickly put drives in a system and uh, dump data to them. I might as well. Uh, I'll leave this one in because that's the one I want to actually make use of. So in order to illustrate the issue I was talking about earlier with the power dropouts that can occur with uh, removable caddies and trying to hot connect a hard drive to a system that's powered on, what I've got here is a um, hard drive plugged into the SATA connector here, SATA power connector, and I'm just going to power this on. And Hopefully you'll be able to have heard from the recorder I've got behind this drive the motor spinning up on this drive as the power is applied. Now what you'll notice when I connect this drive to this power connector as well as this powering up this will drop out and you'll hear a clunk because the heads will 
attempt to park themselves because there's a power sh shortage and the driver will think that the system's actually being switched off and then you'll hear it spin back up and reinitialize itself. And now the second drive's initializing itself. So that dropped out. This this started to power up. This reinitialized itself, and then that initialized itself. You don't get the issue with um, unplugging. There's no problem there. All of these drives I'm using to do this testing, they're all faulty drives anyway. They've got issues with uh, bad sectors, so. I'm not concerned with uh, destroying them. I wouldn't suggest messing about like this with uh, drives that you care about or drives with data on that you want to keep. So, what I'm going to try now, I've got this new Orico Caddy on the same cable plugged in at the top, inside the case up here, you probably can't see it on the camera. I'm going to try the same thing. So I'm powering the system down. Um, I've already got a drive the caddy, the caddy switched off. So I'm going to power the system back up again. And you will have heard this drive spin up and initialize itself. I'm now going to apply the power by pressing the switch on the caddy and we'll see if this drops out again. And yes it did. So even though this is a caddy designed apparently for hot swap, if you use this in a system with this sort of setup with your hard drives you're going to find that your internal drives are going to start dropping out and if that's a drive you're currently saving data to that could cause corruption. If it's your system drive you could have system lockups and all sorts of problems. So I've done a bit of experimenting with this and what I've found is that if you put the drive on a separate cable to the other drives in the system, it does seem to help alleviate the problem. At least with these power supplies I've tried here, because these are fairly decent. Um, I think on some of the cheaper power supplies, you might still have the problem, because ultimately these all go back to the same place, especially on the cheaper ones. Some of the more high-end power supplies, these different runs of wire could go back to a different rail within the power supply so that would explain why it's a bit more robust. I'm not sure how these are wired up internally but that's one useful thing to bear in mind if you want to use a drive where you want to hot swap the drives with the power on then that might be the way to go. Connect, connect it to its own dedicated cable or at least keep anything critical off of there like any internal hard drives. It's interesting looking at the paperwork for this, this Orico bay anyway, because it does say support hot swapping plug and play on the feature list. But if you look over here on the cautions, it says make sure power is disconnected before mounting a hard drive. Now, does that mean make sure the system's powered off? Does it mean make sure the switch is in the off position on the front of the caddy? It's not really very clear and that's the problem with these things, they're just, they're very vague. So Curiosity's got the better of me with this PCB. Uh, I've had a quick look online at these chips. They're an APM4435. Uh, for the sake of simplicity all they really are is a way to switch power. Uh, the mechanical switch on the front of the drive bay is connected through here through to these and the switching of that switch then triggers these to switch. I think the idea is so that they switch the power in a more controlled way than a mechanical switch would. Uh, there's also some additional circuitry here you can see there's basically two lots of this there's a, a chip some resistors and a diode and then again the same here a chip some resistors a diode actually a capacitor as well on each of those and you may be able to see here there's some quite thick traces 
and these traces they go through to the power connectors now one side will be your input which I believe yeah this is your input side so this is where the power comes from the ATX power supply so these traces here are these thick traces here and here they're going into these chips and then when these chips are being activated to switch the power that's then coming out and you can perhaps see here these pins are all connected together and then there's these veers which stitch this layer through to the other side of the board as you can see here again you can see the little holes and again we've got thick traces because these are carrying the power and then they go all along here to the SATA connector here which is the one that's on the inside of the rack and that's where the drive connects to and again you've got another one here now the reason that there's two um, basically pin one on the power side of the starter power connector starts here which is this one here the first three pins are not connected on here the next three pins are the ground which is what most of this other stitched um, part of the PCB as you see all these holes here they stitch the two sides together and this is all ground and then after the ground pin 7 through to 9 these carry your 5 volts so one of the chips is switching the 5 volts and then at the far end pins 13 to 15 again here you can see another thick trace that goes to the other chip and that's the 12 volt being switched now in terms of the activity LED which I was curious about pin 11 which is here it's quite difficult to get this to to show on the camera pin 11 which is here that goes all the way along round to here and then through the board and then as far as I can see it goes into one of these resistors and then that will probably go off to one of the LEDs and which would be the the activity LED so pin 11 on the SATA power connector uh, I knew that it was used for controlled spin-up so that you can power a system up with lots of drives and the idea is it can stagger the drives spin up so you don't end up with say in a server with 10 drives or 10 drives all trying to fire up all at once which would cause a massive sudden power draw the idea is you can set a say a SATA or RAID controller card to spin the drives up gradually over a period of 5-10 seconds or something so that they're not all trying to spin up all at once causing such a massive power draw that's what my thoughts for pin 11 was but I didn't realise that pin 11 can also be used to drive an activity LED so that's something I've learnt in terms of the data connector which is the small part of the connector here uh, there's nothing really very special going on at all um, you may be able to see but on four of the pins there's two pairs this pair here and a pair here you can see some wires going through and they will go through to the other side and they're just going to be connected directly through to the connector on the other side all the other pins are ground they'll all be tied to the common ground uh, for shielding purposes so there's nothing clever there it's just this is all just about power this borders uh, switching the power and then getting an activity um, LED uh, fed from one of the pins